Emily Eman here for the Big Ten Network. Around the Big Ten, we have some legendary volleyball coaches, and I am honored to be joined by one of them now, Kelly Sheffield, the head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers, named the 2022 Big Ten Coach of the Year. Coach, four straight Big Ten titles. It's not easy to get a team to the top, but to keep a team at the top, especially in the Big Ten, is even harder. What has led to so much sustained success for you in this program? I, I mean, it's always the players, right? I mean, you, you, you've got to have the talent. You've got to get everybody going in the right direction. And, you, you know, you've got to have great leadership. And and I think our leadership has been really well. We've got some people that have been around here for a long time when you're thinking about uh, Danielle Hart or Izzy Ashburn or MJ Hamill, uh, Devin Robinson, Jay Demps. I mean, those guys that are new kids or transfers have uh, have really done a, a great job. Caroline uh, Crawford, Sarah Franklin, new kids that have come in and, and they kind of uh, uh, they've done a great job of fitting in. And your team definitely needed those new players. I mean, you graduated four All-Americans, including last year's National Player of the Year, Dana Retke. How did this team get back to really where it left off last season with so many new faces? Uh, we're, we're a different team. How, how we win has been different. You know, I think it's still based on, you know, on good principles and, you know, and, and hard work and, and playing together, uh, you know, being great teammates, all, all of those types of things. But last year's team, we were really, really good at uh, first ball side out. Uh, you know, I think we were as when we were in system, we were as good as anybody. Uh, this year, we are we are not that we're we're still we're still pretty good. This is more of a transition team. Uh, our block is better. Our uh, we're holding people to a lower hitting percentage. Our serving is is a little bit better. Um, you know, we're extending rallies better than what we were. I, I think a, a year ago, but uh, it, it's it might not be as pretty as is, is, is maybe what what we've been. But we found a way that uh, that kind of works for us. And one of the most interesting or intriguing decisions that you've really made this season was to run that two-setter system, which isn't typical, but it's obviously working as this team leads the Big Ten in hitting percentage. Why were you so confident that this would work for this team? Uh, I mean, it's it, we're not trying to find... Uh, it's not about a system and plugging people in a system. The, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. That, but I think what we're trying to do is trying to bring talent, get talent together, and then trying to find a way to to utilize that talent the best what what we can. And um, you know, the six two is not something that we've really done much of, but it just seemed like it would it would be best. It's a uh, you know it it allows us to be a little bit more physical than net. Um, uh, you know, put some more size up there, give our setters more options. You know, they add. Uh, at all times, they've got three three across the front row and one across the back row that they can get to. So just it's uh, you know we've got two six rotation outside. So you, that that's really really key since we're burning through so many subs uh, in, in the six two. So it it, it it works well with the personnel that we have. Well, this is your 10th season with Wisconsin and your third Big Ten Coach of the Year honor. You mentioned how this team is different than the ones that you've had in the past. What makes this award different than the ones you've had in the past? Oh, I don't know. It's a, uh, it, it, I mean, it's it's certainly an honor because the, you know, the types of quality of teams and coaching that you have, but it's, like I said, it's a, it, it's so much about the players and this time of the year, it's, it is it is so much if you're worrying about individual words not just as a coach but as a player then you're just not focusing on the right stuff right here right now you know it's it, it is so much about the opponents that you have uh, enjoying the moments being locked into the present finding ways to get better and, and getting ready to to get into i mean there's what 350 360 teams and we're fortunate that we're one of 64 right now you're not guaranteed anything and so it sounds a little cliche but it, it is you know about that much maybe even less than that are you worrying about any type of awards for any of your players or staff or anything right now but you, you also understand you know who's a part of this league and um you know i mean it's 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 awesome what we get to go up against and so you know it's certainly an honor but not something that we we spend a lot of time on you mentioned wanting to get better every day, similar to how your players do in practice. Since you became a head coach in the Big Ten, what's the number one thing you've learned? 
Oh man, uh, Emily, the the lessons are flying at you constantly. You know, that's one of the things I was we were we were talking about our um, uh, to our team uh, yesterday. We were watching film on ourselves, and you know, you're playing Nebraska and then Ohio State, and we're we're watching our film, and you're like, you're seeing Nebraska really do some things that was really stressing us out. They, they were finding some holes with us. And then the very next night, Ohio State's doing the exact same thing. What well, These were things that people weren't doing to us two weeks ago. So you, the coaches that you're going up against and the players that are able to execute those things and then going back and watching film, it's a real advantage for, for all of our Big Ten teams going into the tournament because – that's every week, right? It's just people exposing things. And then it's up to us as a team and a program and coaches of for that next week working on those things. It's it's intoxicating, you know, that process of getting better. And, uh, you know, that, that makes getting back in the gym a lot more fun because of the things that we were, you know, shown on Friday and Saturday. What was the one thing that you were shown that really stood out to you? Uh, I thought Nebraska did a really good job with some of their serving. You, you know, John's really good at this, of of finding spaces in the court. And it's not just a zone, serve the five zone. I mean, it's very specific areas that you can tell that what they're trying to do. And I thought Ohio State did a really good job of uh, putting the ball in really similar areas. Um, that'd be one. Uh, I thought, you know, Ohio State – their ability to put balls in a lot of different areas. So it's not just a, it's not just them hitting cross court, but it's them hitting different depths cross court. It's them, them taking big swings. It's them uh, 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 taking 80% swings, 60% swings, tipping, rolling, chipping. It's uh, they work the entire court better than anybody. And so you're just constantly in scramble mode and then trying to trans out of that. Um, I thought we got a little bit better as the match went on, but uh, I, I would say that those would probably be two areas that both teams really, really stress us out with really well. Well, we've seen what you can do on the court, but off the court, you're obviously a very big advocate and voice for just the sport of volleyball in general. The Wisconsin-Florida match this season played at the Kohl Center broke the NCAA regular season attendance record with nearly 17,000 fans. Why is it important for you to keep pushing the sport forward like you did while holding a game there? You know, it's so funny that you're asking that because uh, five minutes before this Zoom, I'm on the call with with Keegan Cook at, at Washington, who's, uh, you know, I think he's our president right right now, the ABCA. And, and that was what we were just discussing is, is what's the next thing to ask for? Because, you know, I think both of us were really, really pleased with the selection show and and, and how that was done. I mean, it was just so much better than what it's ever been in, done in the past. And 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 kudos to everybody that, that did that. And what's the next thing is, you know, I think we've got to stretch out our tournament. We've got to make the first rounds a four day affair rather than a three day affair. We've got to get a day off in between. And, and um, you know, same thing with the second round. We've got to be able to utilize more days in, in the tournament. Um, it's this is a sport that is growing um that i look back at the coaches that have come before us you know um you know whether you're you're thinking about uh dunning or jim Malaro or haley or you know on and on and on uh, rose and cook and people that i remember just getting in front of everybody just really really pushing uh, for this sport, and it's it's up to those of us that have come behind them to continue to to push and to pull and to, <laughs> and to bark uh, and fight for a sport. It's a um, you know if we're not going to do it and we're just going to settle and we're just going to worry about our own teams, uh, then we're really letting this thing down. And uh, yeah, so I, I think a lot of us feel a heavy responsibility to uh, to do what the people before us uh, fought for. Well, you mentioned the postseason, so I want to talk about the NCAA tournament a little bit. Wisconsin received a number one seed where you'll host through the regional finals. How important is it to have that home court advantage in postseason? Doesn't matter a lick if you don't win the first weekend, <laughs> you know. So it's a uh, 
you, you know, so although that is nice for the, the you know, it, for the regionals, but it's only that if 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 we make it there, um, you, you know, we're excited about playing Quinnipiac. I've been at that type of school that it's first time in school history to go. It is so incredible. It is so awesome. Um, it, it, they've had a heck of a run to, to get there. We're excited about playing them they're one of both of us are one of 64 and then to play the winner of washington tcu we saw tcu the job that that jason has done this year has just been uh, amazing they continue to get better huge cr credits to him and in washington you know i mean holy cow i mean i think what their top 25 team and and um you know, I think they're like 20th in the Pablo or or something like that. You know, it's not often that a, a top four seed gets, a, you know, has has a team like that uh, opening weekend. So it's it's a big challenge in front of us. It's a big opportunity in front. We'd much rather do it at home uh, than than packing up and and leaving today or tomorrow. It's it's a little bit better deal, especially in front of the fan base that we got here. You mentioned. 16,000 plus uh, that were watching us in the Cole Center. But, you know, I mean, every night we're over 7,000. And so it's a great fan base, great crowd. We sold out like within an hour uh, for for the opening rounds. I remember when we first got here, uh, uh, first couple of years, we are, uh, uh, I'm actually purchasing tickets for the students to give away uh, in order to sell out the, the building. It's awfully nice on the not having to do that anymore. I mean, they're just gobbling this <laughs> way. So it's, it's cool. I mean, again, one of the biggest advocates for our sport. And I know the field house is going to be rocking this weekend and hopefully into next weekend as well. Coach, congrats and thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate it.